extreme danger. If they come through here, they're gonna kill you, I promise you. Huge risk. Watch out. And intense pressure. Ordinary men. Come on! Extraordinary jobs. Oh man. This week, the men who risk their lives to keep America fully powered. You have to be a thinking machine continuously, and the penalty for failure is, is high. If you lose focus is when you die, or you kill someone else, that's just the way it is. These men fly dangerously close to some of the world's deadliest power lines. Sometimes it's six inches away, and if he hits at the tail, you're done. You're going to the dirt at a high rate of speed. With electricity surging all around them, the slightest mistake could prove fatal. Our safety books have been written in blood. They have been written in blood because somebody has died. And now the team are daring to take on work so hazardous, it's never been attempted before. Fuck you waiting on, catch it! The guy's lives are in jeopardy, without any exaggeration to say that. Everybody's got to be on their game. Little Rock, Arkansas. Situated in the south of the United States, the power lines running through this region are some of the vital main arteries in America's electricity network. If a fault should develop along these lines, it could be catastrophic, with whole cities plunged into darkness. These lines provide power across the country, nationwide, United States and Canada. These lines help power. Critical work needs to be carried out on these lines, and Air 2, an elite team of power line workers, are heading towards Little Rock to take on the job. We will be working in close proximity to the conductors, and they are energized. The induction current can and will kill you. The lines are so crucial in keeping America powered that turning them off is avoided at all costs. This means that Air 2 will have to carry out all their work on live lines. Everybody knows that we are working 500,000 volts, live line, bare hand. The risks are enormous. Electricity can flow easily through a human body. A voltage as low as 240 could be lethal. Here, the team will be working on a 500,000 volt power line. If you were electrocuted with 500,000 volts, it would probably explode you. <laughs> You're gonna be burned to a crisp. There's no one gonna be able to identify your body. In case of emergency today, the hospital closest to our work location still is Memorial Hospital. Be safe. The first task for the team is to replace the spacers the metal brackets which stop the wires from rubbing together in the wind and wearing out. There's not a moment to lose as they have 300 spaces to replace in just three days. We're really, really under pressure to get what we need done in the deadline that we have. At 26, Thomas Slider is already an experienced lineman and the latest team member. I do have seven years of experience building power lines, but, but there is a lot to prove here. There's a lot of really, really good linemen. You want to do the best job you can. I don't want to do anything else. This is what I want to do. Who wants to do something that you hate every day? What kind of shit is that? 31-year-old Thad Donahue has spent nine years working as a lineman. I mean, look around, how many people actually are miserable every morning when they get up and go to fucking work? I mean, really. I get to smile. Look what I get to ride to work. It's like being on a Harley with wings. That's what it's like. It's like being on my Harley with wings. Because the lines are live, the linemen must ensure that they, the helicopter, and the pilot all become part of the electrical circuit. What we do is, you take this wand, and what it does is it energizes the helicopter to the same voltage of whatever you're working on. 500,000 volts through this wire.
My heart was pumping on the first one, you know. You draw a huge arc. It's, it's monstrous and it's so loud. It's just great and I love it. With 500,000 volts surging out of the wand and onto the helicopter, it's vital the linemen wear a protective suit so the current flows around them, not through them. What it's made out of is 75% flame retardant material and 25% stainless steel material. And what this does, it actually allows the electricity to flow over us. Even with the suit, it's still super, super uncomfortable. It feels like, uh, like ants biting you. These are, uh, these are hot gloves and you'll notice they're really long and what that is is they'll go up on your body to help, uh, to help make the connection because everything has to be connected on the suit. My gloves touch my jacket, my jacket touch my pants, my pants touch the helicopter, everything's one and that's how it all works. And if everything's right, then we don't get shocked too awfully bad. The wand channels the electricity, bringing the crew and the helicopter to 500,000 volts. Now, without the risk of a massive electric shock, it's safe to attach the clamp. And this keeps the helicopter energized to whatever voltage we're working on. Then I start my work. I mean, that's some cool ass shit that we do. I don't know if you keep <laughs> watching that. That's flipping awesome. And the chicks dig it too. It's the biggest thing. Replacing the spaces is intense and tiring work. My arms were getting so weak, my muscles are just so, they were just, I couldn't do no more. I was getting to where I could barely hold up the gun to take the other ones off. I, could, I was having to hold two hands up there. Despite working flat out, it's proving difficult for the team to keep on schedule. We got uh, very little time to do it in, and it's, uh, it's really put us on the spot. The power company wants us to get this done. After the break, work is put on hold as the team are called away on an emergency. A helicopter made contact with one of their power lines, and they do have wire down. Two men died. It's not a good feeling. You know, this is a dangerous job. Power line work is extremely dangerous and highly specialized. These power lines in Arkansas are some of the highest voltage and most deadly in the world, at a massive 500,000 volts. 500,000 volts working with that, it's kind of like the Everest of what we do, really. I mean, everybody wants to work 500,000 hot. Air 2, a specialist team of power line workers, are carrying out critical maintenance work along these live lines. They have three days to replace 300 spacers, the metal brackets which stop the wires from rubbing together. It's the first day of the job and the team are working non-stop to stay on schedule. The work's going great. Uh, the boys are, uh, are all working strong. We're just, uh, we're just plugging through it. One more load after one more load after one more load. Crucial to the job is British-born pilot John O'Soul, who's been flying for two decades. When he started power line work nine years ago, he had to go against every basic instinct as a pilot. My initial reaction was, you've got to be fucking kidding. As helicopter pilots were trained from day one that power lines are the evil enemy and to stay the minimum recommended distance is 500 feet, and then you come and work here, and you get three feet to a power line. That's a fairly big difference from 500 feet. And that has a fair amount of appeal to me. I've never really been interested in the, in the, in the mundane. I mean, if you look at the tail, you're so close. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes it's six inches away and that's, you know, pretty close because if he hits at the tail, you're done. You're going to the dirt at a high rate of speed. So I don't look, I, I really don't need to look. There are 
unique rules to power line flying. If you violate those rules, you will, if not be dead, be very much at wishing that you were dead. You have to be a thinking machine continuously, and the penalty for failure is, is high. If you don't do your job 100%, and he doesn't do his job 100%, either one of the guys can kill each other. Over a thousand miles away in New York State, Thomas's girlfriend of 18 months, Marilyn, is still coming to terms with the dangers of his job. There are a lot of women whose husbands and boyfriends have these jobs where they don't know if they're coming home at the, at the end of the evening. And I've just never seen myself as the kind of person who could really sort of be that, who could be that strong, who could, you know, worry that much. And in fact, you know, one of the things that he does on a regular, you know, every day, when he gets off the helicopter, he'll call me up, you know, just even if it's for two second conversation, I'm down on the ground, I'll talk to you later. So that way I can just, you know, that's it, the day's over, he's back. There are just so many things that could happen. Because you're thinking, you know, it's a little helicopter, and what if it gets caught up in the wire, and they're working on electrified towers all the time? So it's very scary. You know, it isn't the kind of thing where you can say goodnight and just be like, oh, I'll talk to you tomorrow, because you don't really know if you're going to talk to him tomorrow. A helicopter crashes in northern Arkansas this morning, killing two people on board. Officials say the helicopter was inspecting power lines near the Norfolk Dam. 150 miles away from the Air 2 team, there's been an accident involving another power line company. Well, Scott, I'm actually standing about a quarter mile south of the Norfolk Dam, and you can actually see the power lines that we're talking about right behind me. Now, these charred remains are all that's left of this 1965 Hughes helicopter, but one thing is for certain, they were flying very close to these power lines. As the team arrived for the second day of the Spacer job, news of the disaster filters through. I don't know if we don't have any structure damage at this point. But mm -hmm. We were just notified by Intergy, who we're working for as our customer, that they had a helicopter make contact with one of their power lines north of Little Rock. There were fatalities involved. The pilot and the passenger in the helicopter were killed. Um, unfortunate event, and they do have wire down. We've just informed all of our employees to phone home, let the families and friends know that, hey, there was an incident, but we weren't involved. Uh, I left a message for my wife. I generally let her know straight off when things like that happen. Everyone always puts two, to get two together and generally ends up with us. All right, I love you. Bye. I just called my girlfriend, Marilyn, and just letting her know that uh, there was an incident. I told her, I said, you know, it's not us, and she goes, it's not you yet. She knows how dangerous it is and she doesn't like it. It's very disheartening when we hear of any fatality or anybody getting hurt. It's, you know, it's sickening. With power down and needing to be restored immediately, the team put the spacer work on hold and launch into action. For these rapid response experts, each emergency job is a journey into the unknown. But this time, the team are all too aware that workers in their industry died on the job. For us to be here on this crash site, it's a wake up for everybody. Because we, we, work, we, work on the, we work on the helicopters, our friends ride on the side of the helicopters, and just one little, one little not paying attention, looking at one thing, flying into a wire. You know, so everybody's kind of on edge on, on, the, on the job today. With pressure on to get the power line restored, emotions are set aside. You know, I feel bad for the families and the guys that were involved with the crash. But in all honesty, when I'm actually working, I really don't think about anything apart from what I'm doing. The priority right now is to get the line back in service as quickly and safely as possible, and the rest of it can come later. Jono's first task is to lift off the severed line. 